Hello, and welcome to my channel. In our lives, we never know what the future holds. There are some of us out there whose lives changed overnight, but that change often comes with a price. We often want our lives to change, and we want it to happen instantly. But in reality, not all of us are ready for it. This is a story of a man who received an unsuspected reward and found his new home in a rather horrifying way. Now, let's begin our story. I never knew I had a relative in Mark's main city. Surprisingly, I received a letter saying that I have inherited a house. Well, a mansion to be exact. I was more than excited to hear it. I used to work at a factory and I was bored out of my mind. I needed something to change my life. As soon as I received the letter, I didn't think twice about quitting my job. My trip to Mark's main city took a few hours. I had to hitch a ride to my destination because the location is a bit far outside the city. The mansion is great and it's bigger than what I imagined. The building looks old, but the front lawn is well maintained. The mansion has three floors and the architecture looks gothic, which makes it look a bit creepy. I wanted to ring the bell, but I couldn't find the button. Then I realized that the gate was unlocked. I let myself in and walked toward the door. I noticed that there were no cars in the garage. I found it a little strange because I thought that all rich people owned at least one fancy car. After knocking on the door for several times, a woman came out. To my surprise, she was wearing a maid outfit with black and white colors, just like the one you see in the movies. I thought that there was a cosplay party inside, but then I realized that she was actually the maid of the house. There was something odd about her appearance, though. Her face was pale, and her eyes were giving on a black stare. Although she had a cute face and bright blonde hair, there wasn't a hint of smile on her face. I introduced myself to her and showed her the letter that was sent to me. Then another person came out of the house. He was a tall man wearing a black tuxedo. His jet black hair was thick, just like his mustache. The man looked like he was in his late forties. Unlike the maid, his face looked tough and dignified. His eyes were sharp, and he was investigating me with his gaze. Then, he let out a big smile and shook my hand. His face turned friendly all of a sudden. He told me to come in, while the maid walked away. The man introduced himself as the butler of the house. He told me that the owner of the house has been ill for quite some time. He just took his medicine and was resting in his room. I admit I was curious. The letter told me that the owner of the house was a distant cousin of mine. My dad used to tell me that he had a relative who owned a jewelry shop somewhere, but I couldn't remember where it is. After a short talk, the butler asked me to follow him. As we walked through the interior of the mansion, I felt as if we just went through a time gate. Everything was just old-fashioned. The old photos, the standing at the clock, and even the rotary dial telephone. It was as if the house was built in the 1980s and hasn't changed ever since. I also noticed another strange thing. There were no light bulbs in the house. I saw several light sockets, but there were no light bulbs. Instead, I saw candle holders placed on every table. The butler took me to the second floor. He told me that I could use one of the empty rooms to put my belongings. The owner of the house would meet me at dinner, and I was allowed to rest until then. The mansion was a little dark, and I didn't count how many rooms there were, but the butler pointed me to a room near the window that leads to the front yard. He took out a bunch of keys from his pocket 
and opened the door. Despite the dark and gloomy atmosphere, the room was quite comfortable. I would choose that cold, dark room over my shabby apartment any day of the week. The butler told me to make myself comfortable. Then, the maid I saw earlier came into my room. She was carrying a tray, and on the tray there was a plate of sandwich and a glass of water. When I saw the sandwich, I could hear my stomach cheering. The maid put the tray on the table next to the bed. The butler told me to enjoy the meal, and he also told me to stay in my room until dinner time. It was strange, but I didn't mind. I thought that the place would be mine soon, and I could explore all I want later. The butler and the maid left the room. Everything went silent all of a sudden. I didn't waste any more time and went straight for the sandwich. While I was eating, I stood by the window and looked at the surrounding scenery. The neighborhood is quiet here. That's because there are no other houses in the area. But there was one thing that made me curious. How did they manage to take care of a mansion this big? I didn't think it was possible if they do it with just the two of them. There were probably other helpers in the house, but I didn't see any sign of them. After drinking the water, I felt tiredness overtook me, and I wanted to take a quick nap. Hopefully, after I wake up, I'll still have some time to do a little bit of exploring before dinner time. I took off my jacket, hung it on the wall hanger, and went straight to bed. Rousiness was making my eyes feel heavy and I went to sleep in minutes. When I finally woke up, everything was already dark. Then, I realized that the sun had already set. I fumbled in the dark and took a flashlight from my bag. I saw the moonlight suddenly going through the window. For some reason, I felt a strange cold sensation in the air. But the weird thing was, when I turned my flashlight on, I didn't see any air conditioner in the room. I pointed my flashlight at the tray. There was a small part of me that wished that the waiter had put a new sandwich on it. At that moment, I just realized that the tray was made of silver. I moved the plate away to be able to see more clearly. And then, I noticed something else. Under the plate, it turned out that there was something written on the tray, written with red ink. Leave now, said the writing. If it weren't for the gloomy atmosphere in the room, I would have thought that the writing was written in blood. Just as I was getting confused about the meaning of the writing, I heard a knock on the door. I jolted. The quiet room made the knock sound like thunder. A man's voice was heard from behind the door. It was the butler's voice. I turned off the flashlight put it in my pocket, and opened the door. I saw the butler smile at me. In his right hand was a candle holder with the yellow candle on it. The butler said it would be dinner time soon, and he asked me to come to the dining room. He also added that the host wanted to discuss the handover of the house. I was full of spirits and agreed to the offer. I ended up following the butler and forgot about the words on the tray. While we were walking toward the dining room, I noticed that the whole interior of the mansion was covered in darkness. There were small lights coming from the candles, but that was it. I saw the shadows in the darkness dancing around because of the swaying candlelight. I swear, the owner of this house must be a very stingy person. If it weren't for the butler, I would have been lost after walking ten steps away from the room. The dining room turned out to be quite spacious and was able to fit a long table with two chairs at both ends. At one end of the dining table, there was already a man sitting there. He seemed oblivious to my presence. I couldn't see his face because he was dark. His head was slightly downcast, as if he was sleeping. The butler walked to his chair and whispered something into his ear. 
At that moment, I realized that that man was the owner of the mansion. There wasn't much to say about him, except that he was a fat man wearing an old-fashioned shirt. His body was so fat, it made his shirt look two sizes smaller than it was supposed to be. The butler also said that if I have any questions, I have to tell him first, and only then will he convey them to the mansion's owner. The mansion's owner was already weak because of his illness, so it was hard for him to hear and speak. In his daily life, the butler was the one who represented him when speaking. At that moment, I saw four maids entering the dining room, carrying trays. There was one man and three women, including the one who greeted me earlier. I wasn't going to ask where did they get the food. What I wanted to know was how they could even cook in a dark place like this. While we were eating, the mansion's owner asked me all kinds of questions. He wanted to know about my age, my favorite sport, how many brothers and sisters I have, and even my marriage status. I was never married, and my brother died about a year ago, but all those questions seemed a bit personal to me. It was almost as if they didn't know anything about me. If I was such a stranger to them, then why would they inherit this house from me? After the questions were over, the butler nodded and turned to me. He told me that it was time to sign the handover of the mansion. At that time, I couldn't agree more. I finished my meal, drank a glass of water, and was preparing myself for the turning point in my life. Near the fat man's hand, it turned out that there was a piece of paper hidden in the shadows. The butler took the paper and asked me to sign it. Strangely, when I asked for a pen, he gave me a small knife instead. He said that agreement must be signed not with ink, but with human blood. Suddenly, things turned awkward. I admit, I felt hesitant. I've never heard of an agreement that would use human blood before. I took out my flashlight and pointed the light at the paper. Under the light, I saw the letters move by themselves, twisting and twirling as if they were alive. At that moment, I smelled a foul stench in the air, as if there was a rotten meat in the room. At that moment, I saw a fly perched on my hand, but it wasn't alone. There were a few more of them flying near my hand. I could hear the sounds of their wings buzzing around me. Out of instinct, I pointed my flashlight at the fat man. I saw his face was already half rotted, and a part of his skull was visible to the naked eye. I could see some of the flies were circling his head. His two white eyes were empty and looked like white marble, yet I knew that he was staring at me. I pointed my flashlight at the servants. Three of them had the same fate. Their faces were like the faces of rotting corpses. But somehow, the maid who greeted me this afternoon had a better face than the others. The butler laughed at me. His voice echoed throughout the whole mansion. He told me that I was the first one who read the letter before signing it. The previous ones didn't give much thought and they were willing to cut their fingers and put their blood on the paper. He told me that it was actually a shaman who found a way to keep his youth in exchange for human souls. Almost a century ago, he was a lowly servant who worked in the mansion. The owner of the mansion, the fat man, was his first victim. He managed to trick him into signing the paper. The butler became the new owner of the house while the previous owner turned to mindless husk, living only to serve, and letting the butler absorb his life essence. But humans don't live forever. The slave's body would soon decay, and there would be no life left to extract. The butler began searching for new victims by sending out false letters to unknown strangers, saying that they would inherit the mansion from a distant family. After the invasion of the internet, his efforts became much easier. 
He could find the names and addresses of many people throughout the country without having to leave the mansion. He kept the mansion dark because he didn't want anyone to see the faces of the other people in the house. The butler's latest victim was the blonde female maid. She was more than happy to come to the mansion only to receive a dreadful fate. I, on the other hand, didn't want to end up as a corpse maid for the rest of my life. I turned around and ran as fast as I could. It was a good thing I brought a flashlight with me. I didn't care about my bag. The butler could keep it for all I care. As I ran through the darkness, I felt as if the doors and windows had changed places. I found myself running down long, dark corridors that weren't there before. I knew that the mansion was big, but at that time, I felt like the mansion had turned to a giant maze. And then, all of a sudden, I found myself back in the dining room again. The butler and his servants just stood there as if they knew that it was useless for me to run away. He told me that he cast a spell on every servant in the mansion to make them obey his every word. But the blonde-haired one has a strong will. Sometimes, she would try to escape the mansion but the butler always managed to bring her back. He also saw her wrote something on a tray, but he kept quiet about it. The butler put the candle holder on the dining table. He told me that there was a war and one way to recruit a servant. The butler said that if the guest refused to sign the paper, then the shadows of the mansion would claim him by force. I saw his eyes glow bright red in the dark. Then I felt something moved under my feet. The shadows changed into liquid black slime that covered my body and lifted me into the air. I felt their strong grip on my hands and feet. Slowly it crept up to my chest, my neck, and went into my mouth and nose. I felt like every inch of my body was being filled with cold water right to my very bones. My mind went blank for a few seconds and I felt like something was entering my brain. After that, the cold feeling slowly disappeared, replaced by a soothing, calm sensation. I stopped the urge to resist and surrender to the shadows. The butler walked toward me and gave me a friendly hug. Welcome to the family, he said. I nodded, and from that moment on, the butler became my master and the mansion became my new home. Several months later, while cleaning the candle holders, I hear someone knocking at the mansion's front door. As I walk to the front door, I see my reflection in one of the mirrors. I am now wearing my new uniform, a white shirt, a bow tie, and long black trousers. I open the front door and see a young man wearing glasses with black shirt and a pair of jeans. He tells me that he received a letter saying that he had inherited the mansion. I told him to wait in front of the door while I called the butler. Although my face looks pale and my eyes look empty, deep down I feel excited. Soon, this mansion will have a new family member. And so, that concludes our story. Each of us is responsible for our own dreams. We can try to be anything we want to be, but it takes time and effort to do so. It is possible that something good will happen to you and change your life forever, but it rarely happens overnight. Be patient and enjoy the process. Some people may try to trick you and take advantage of you. It's all part of a struggle to achieve your dreams. If you see something that is too good to be true, then it probably is. That is all for now. I will see you soon with another story. Thank you for watching.